That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Causeway, the directorial debut of Lila Neugebauer, uh, which A24 is releasing uh, along with Apple TV, uh, November 4th, 2022. Uh, premiered at the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival. I thought this was a well done, like simple, quiet film. It is. It is a very quiet, subtle film. Kind of reminds me of, you know, like softer character studies that you'd see in, from like 1970s American cinema, which I really appreciate and enjoy. Directorial debut. Uh, she's a notable stage director. So Jennifer Lawrence plays a woman who suffered a traumatic brain injury while she was serving in Afghanistan. So we see her um, being sent back to the U.S. She spends a little bit of time, like the first 15 minutes of the film, mm -hmm. uh, in like a group home maybe, like recovering. And then she goes back to her actual home in New Orleans. And her thought is that she's going to be able to be re-enlisted or like, like go back to work. But that requires her doctor to sign a release. So we see her working on that. We see her getting a job as a pool cleaner. We also see her make friends with a mechanic played by Brian Tyree Henry. Mm -hmm. And the bulk of the story is sort of their relationship. Yeah. Which comes to a head because both of them sort of are not, you know, they're guarded with each other. But it's clear they enjoy each other's company. But maybe like at the two-thirds point they reveal to each other sort of the full the full um, force scope of their, of, their yeah. trauma yeah so brian tyree henry's character is missing a leg because he was involved in, involved in a car accident where his nephew was killed and his sister was badly injured and of course he lost his leg also drinking was involved um so they sort of get into an argument and decide they're not going to be friends but we also learn that Lawrence is so eager to rejoin the military because she hates being at home. Home is where her mother is. Played by Linda Imond. Yeah. Who is a drunk. And her brother, she talks about him in the past tense. So for the entire film, we assumed he was dead, but he's not. He's a junkie and uh, a dealer. So he's in prison. Mm -hmm. So, in the final act of the film, we see her go to prison to visit her brother, mm -hmm. who happens to be deaf. And she's communicating with him. And it seems like she settles into the fact that their mom is going to be fine on her own. Mm -hmm. Her brother's probably better off in prison because he's not using and he looks healthier and he's made some friends. And maybe she can build a life at home outside of her mother's house. So, the final scene of the film is Jennifer going to Brian saying that they should live together. Lindsay and James. And he says, sure. And then the line that kind of got... I was emotional quite a bit throughout this movie, but I think the final line she tells him is like, I'm just trying to make a friend. Mm -hmm. So Well, because it's also important to know she's a lesbian. Yeah, it is important to know that she's a lesbian. But he's attracted to her, but that gets squashed very quickly when he realizes. But then that also starts conflict but later. Sexuality is kind of what causes their, their blowout, because she kisses him. And, you know, the, the, you know, it's mixed messaging to him, and then... Her, also, her head injury has also allowed her to... She kind of blurts things out sometimes that are truthful, but hurtful. Because um, she does that early on with Sharon, uh, the caretaker played by Jane Hootieshell of The Humans. I liked her. I got emotional watching her, watching her and just like, you know, people who do those jobs and like care for strangers in that way. And she was so good. I did write down, Sharon lets uh, Jennifer drive... <laughs> Well, she's in the car with her. And she is. They're on an isolated road. They are, but I was like, I don't know about this. And then and then Jennifer starts like kind of zoning out and Sharon's like, you need to pull this car she over. She starts to get to most. She's starting to cry. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's just very subtle and it's I think it's also really refreshing and rare these days to see something kind of back away from just trying to be dramatic for shock value. Sure. Um, it, it really is just a story about two you know, very wounded people coming together in Louisiana. There's that ubiquitous scene where like the, like the mom is at the kitchen table with all the past two bills. <laughs> trying to appeal to her daughter like you need to get a real job. Mm -hmm. her, her, Jennifer Lawrence going to get a job. She shows up. Uh, it's Frederick Weller who 
uh, recently suffered through Neil Labute's Out of the Blue. He was a police officer in that. Movie. Oh, yeah. She's just like, I need a job. I can clean pools. And he goes, okay. <laughs> that made me tense because she's in New Orleans cleaning pools at these very fancy homes. And then there's one home in particular where she invites Brian... Brian's character over and the first thing he says is like am I okay like I'm not gonna get he shot goes, he goes am I gonna get shot today and she's like no they're on vacation but I thought that was funny because I was very tense for him like mm -hmm. I know you just didn't invite this man over here but they spend quite a bit of time at this house hanging out and I was so tense for the entire movie thinking like oh my god the owners are gonna come home and call the police but they never do so I kind of like that this felt like just a nice emotional ride that didn't need to pull all the stops yeah yeah it, it, I, I did appreciate that. I also liked how it looked. It was shot by uh, Diego Garcia, who was the cinematographer for Pichapong Rastical on Cemetery of Splendor. He also shot a couple excellent films uh, from Brazil's Gabriel Vascaro, including Neon Bull uh, from 2015. If you haven't seen that, highly recommend Neon Bull. Bull. He also did uh, Divine Love for the same director and Paul Dano's Wildlife. Um, Patricia Clarkson was the executive producer. So, you know, a very uh, finely tuned debut. And I'm not surprised to see that this is from someone coming from the stage because a lot of careful, a lot, a lot of care, it felt, was taken in well, you navigation. Know, we just talked, I don't know when the review for The Whale is coming out. Or, December. Or this one. But, you know, my sort of how I felt about The Whale is it did feel like I was at some points watching like a stage play. Mm -hmm. And I think this film, it, it really did feel very natural, like the two main... There's a really good scene with Jennifer Lawrence and the her mom uh, in like a kiddie pool outside mm -hmm. that I thought was... Like the way they were talking felt very natural. So yeah, I think this movie's very good. Right, and you know, you can just tell that there's such complexity to these relationships that you don't have to... Explicitly, explicitly define. define for us an exposition. We get it. We get like the mother, you know, Linda Iman, who's also a notable stage actor and a character actor. You've seen in tons of things, right? And just the the subtleties that come across in what they aren't saying. I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I was very impressed. What would you give this movie? Uh, I think three and a half. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh,